Okay, uh, so again, welcome everyone to Paper Club. Uh, this week, Amin is uh, going to be presenting uh, the paper and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have an interesting discussion about it. Uh, the paper today is a bit more on the mathematical side and it addresses this uh, question of why are transformers so much better than, than everything else and in particular CNNs. And it tries to give it, give a bit of a, a more theoretical twist on trying to approach how transformers learn and uh, how they compare to CNNs. Uh, so yeah, go ahead, I mean, walk us through it. All right, thank you, Carlos. Uh, let me just share my screen quick. Okay, so can you guys see that? Yep, okay. Uh, yeah, so my name is Amin. I am a, um, well, soon to be a data engineer at MPlan. Uh, uh, so today's paper is on the relationship between self-attention and convolution layers. Um, I think my overall impression of the paper is it's, it's very interesting um, in terms of you know, practical implications. Um, not really sure what to take away, but <clears throat> then again, I don't think that this is the point of the paper. I think the point is to to see why um, fully attentional models have been um, successful in vision problems, and to do this, uh, you know, through a proof. So, uh, if I think a, a good follow up paper for this one would be uh, where is it? Okay, it won't, it won't allow me to click on, it would be uh, this one here. So standalone self-attention in, in vision models um, for the actual implementation of um, partly and fully attentional models in, in vision problems. So, okay, we can start with um, a quick review of the, the multi-head self-attention layer. Um, I think this has uh, been gone over a few times at Paper Club with the the famous um, the Illustrated Transformer blog, but I think I think it's worth um, you know re refreshing what what this is for for those who would find that useful. So um, the main idea behind the the this uh, self attention layer is that given some collection of input tokens, we want to find. Um, we want to get some representation out of the model in a way that allows each token to attend to each other one um, uh, simultaneously. Uh, so, in so an example could be words in a sentence. We want each word to receive information or pay attention to each other word um, in in the sentence. So, the way that this is done. Um, in the, the multi-head self-attention layer is for each um, token, there's, a, there's an input embedding. And for each embedding, um, three vectors are, are computed by, by multiplying by a weight matrix. So the, the query, the key, and uh, the value vector. Um, so you can see here, this, this will represent the, the matrix of query vectors uh, where, where, where each row is the query vector for, for each token. And uh, this is the same for the for the key vectors, but transposed. Um, and from this, attention scores are computed by taking uh, the dot product of a token's query vector and key vector, uh, and then the, the the softmax is is applied to that, so that the the um, attention weights sum to one, and uh, so. At the token level, this is then uh, so. Then you have a, a sum over for each token. You have a sum over all of the value vectors for all of the other tokens, and this is weighted by the attention uh, probabilities. So, that's... may I ask a question? <laughs> sure. Well, um, this might, but it's probably a very stupid question, actually. The query and key, did they always seem to appear to come together? Is it? Is it splitting into a query part and a key part? Is that arbitrary, or could, could we just have defined like one matrix that has, uh, you know, the, the the fitting dimensions, or, or do they actually at some point separate into meaningful units? So 
the the query and the key matrices are different. Uh, the, sorry, the, the query and the key weight matrices are different for for the reason that um, you you want you you want um, each token to pay attention to each other one in a way that's asymmetric or rather not necessarily symmetric. So like the second word in a sentence won't might be important for the last word, but we don't have to have it the other way around. Um, so does that does that answer your question? Uh, not not quite. I think the it, it's a question. Why, why do we have two matrices if we could combine them into one matrix? But but it might be it might be obvious later on, or, or it might not be relevant at all. So that the I, so the main reason that these are separated it's uh, it's because you're trying to learn two different sets of weights. So you're trying to learn the weights uh, for let, let, let's call it for the how important is each word uh, when you're trying to predict on itself mm -hmm. and then how much uh, how important is every other word when you're trying to predict on that word so each one has to be a matrix depending on your sequence length yeah. your maximum sequence length uh, and the weights are different so when when the when the word is being predicted on and when the word is being attended uh, the weights are different so uh, does that make sense? I, I, I suppose so. so. So you say WE changes given different circumstances. Uh, yes, I, I think. I, I think. I think that way. So so yes. So basically, you, you're just trying to make it so that when you multiply these matrices, you're getting that desired behavior of. Uh, having a weight for the let's call it the central yeah. word and then a different weight for everyone for every other word but then when you shift your attention window uh, again you have a uh, you have a different weight for the central word and uh, different weights for the for the words around it okay so so they, they, are, they are ultimately controlled separately mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay that, that, that's sensible mm -hmm. thank you okay great uh so okay, so that's how the um, so that's that's the output of the the, the self attention layer. Um, what makes it multi head is um, this is just repeated repl replicated multiple times. Um, so at each head there is a different um, uh, there are different query key and value weight matrices. Um, and then the the outputs are then concatenated and then uh, projected onto um, however many dimensions um, you you want the the output representation to be. So so in this case, this is the uh, the W out matrix here. Um, okay, so that's multi-head self-attention. Uh, a small point which which will continue to come up in the paper is that. Um, I guess it's not a small point, but um, a property of self-attention is that because every token is attending to each other one, if you were to, to shuffle the tokens, um, it, you would get the same output. So um, this, this has to be sorted out because um, of course you, you don't want your, your model to be, to be equivalent to, to reordering in the sense that, you know, for example, words in a sentence a sentence can mean something very different if the words are, are changed around. So the way that this is done is for each token, there is a uh, vector which encodes the position. Um, so you can see here for each, uh, for the, the input um, matrix, you also have a, a position, positional encoding a matrix, which is either learned or fixed. Um, I think in the, the original transformer paper, this is fixed. Um, so, okay, that's multi-head self-attention. Um, in terms of how this operates on images, uh, yeah, so attention for images, um, I think I will go to the, the blog, um, which accompanies the paper because there are some good visualizations here. So, okay, how does convolution operate on an image? Um, this is uh, pretty straightforward. So for the pixel in question, 
um, you you kind of want to scan over the pixels in in the kernel uh, for the, the the pixel vector across the input channels, and you you multiply it by its uh, slice of the weight tensor, and you sum this across all of your shifts. So so this this uh, this here is the is uh, are all of the the shifts and all of the, the coordinate shifts in your kernel. Um, and these are then uh, summed all together and you add a bias term. So this is the output when the, the convolution kernel is applied to um, a single uh, uh, pixel or a single uh, vector of, of pixels across the, the input channel, the input channels. So, okay, that's, that's convolution. Um, in term, so in terms of notation, I think I've I've never seen this kind of notation being used before, but it 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 is it is useful for the the, the proofs. Uh, well, for one of the proofs later. So um, in terms of multi-head self-attention, uh, so an intuitive difference is that for convolution, for for the pixel. In question, the receptive field is just the kernel, um, and for multi-head self-attention, for the pixel in question, the, the receptive field is the entire image. So, um, again, this is the same as what uh, we discussed just before. Um, you have your you, so f f the the output of the 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 self-attention layer for a, one pixel is uh, you find the attention probabilities uh, across all of the the key pixels in the image um, and sum them and then uh, the the output for each head is then concatenated and then projected so but this is this is just a nice um, visualization of this yeah okay so uh, I, I have a question yeah. Uh, I don't know if it comes up later, but normally, so the way you would achieve this uh, a, a bigger receptive field is just stacking uh, convolutional layers on top of each other, and then you have a bigger receptive field. So they speak about the similarity between that and transformers later. Uh, not that I remember. So what do you mean by stacking convolution layers on top of each other? Because, so if your first convolution attends over, uh, it's easier to visualize it in 2D, in, in 1D. So if your first convolution attends over two things, or over the, the two neighboring points, yeah. then when you apply the same convolution, but in the next layer, what you, what you have is, it's like a pyramid effect. So the next layer, the receptive field is actually uh, larger and larger and larger. Okay. Mm. okay. Yeah, that's that's an interesting point. I don't think that's um, touched upon in the paper. Mm. I remember. But, okay. Yeah, thank you. No um, so, okay, if we can actually get to the paper. Okay. So, um, okay. So that's that's how both layers operate on images. Um, there's a point here about uh, the the positional encoding that's required for images. So. If we want, so the the goal of the the paper is to construct a self attention layer, which under some conditions behaves exactly like a convolution layer, um, and but 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 one of the the properties of uh, convolution that we that we want is translational invariance. So ideally, we would want the attention scores to depend only on. The, the shift, so the difference between the query and the key pixel, as opposed to the the absolute position of of um, of either one. So you can uh, so the what what is done is is um, they they cite the the transformer XL paper, um, which okay I can't get it out, but um, what what happens is. You take the uh, the positional encoding uh, equation here, and you can expand it out into um, only content-based uh, 
uh, attention and only position based attention and then the the um, kind of mixture of both um, and this is then modified to make sure that only relative position is um, uh, considered so there are three um, main changes um, the first one is wherever there is a a positional um, an absolute positional encoding for the key you simply replace it by a a relational uh, uh, sorry, a relative uh, positional encoding. Um, and so that's the first change. The second change is the the key matrices, uh, the sorry, the key weight matrices that are used to produce um, the, the, the position um, key vector are deliberately um, separate, separated from the ones that are used to make the content-based um, uh, key vectors. So there's a split between content-based key vectors and uh, position-based key vectors. Um, and the third change is that um, the, the query um, vectors here are simply replaced by um, two learnable vectors, u and v. Um, so yeah, so these are these are the three three changes, and this Sorry. way we have. Can, yes. I, can I ask a question? The, sure. Here it comes again, right? So we have the, the query and the key, which in equation seven they they, they are one thing, right? So in, if, if I understand correctly, we change the uh, coordinate system of sorts to, to be relative. And now, uh, we we sort of split it off. But uh, what, what happened to, to W query? Why, why is W query suddenly gone or did, did it get reabsorbed? Yeah, so, so the reason why W query is gone is, is explained. I, I think I can, I can pull up the, the transformer Excel paper, um, which gives an, an explanation here. I, I'm also not 100% on, on, on the reason behind the change, but it says, okay, so um, once, uh, the the query um, so which one is it again yeah so once the the positional um, query vector is replaced by a a um, a single learnable vector then it says it suggests that the the attentive bias towards different words should remain the same regardless of the query position so that that particular term doesn't depend on the, the query position. So how, how much you attend to the key pixels should be the same irregardless of the, the position of the query. Um, this, is, um, this is the reason. So the, the V and the U, they are still trainable. So, so they yeah. sort of must contain the, 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 the query then because it's to some extent a, a rewriting of the of the original equations. Right? I think it. I think it's worth pointing out that. Um, so the concept of queries, keys, and values is actually is actually a bit abstract. So oh, yeah. they don't have to be fixed, right? Like the the idea behind attention is that you need um, that you need something that will help you learn the query values. So so the you need learnable learnable ways for the query, which will tell you how how how, how important is the the pixel in this case that you are querying. Uh, you need a different uh, set of learnable weights for the for for whatever is around that, and and then you need uh, a, a different one for the values. Which I can't remember what is the abstraction at the moment for the values, but it's just this idea that you need three sets of learnable weights to do a um, attention properly. Oh, right, of course. And then you need the values which transforms the whole thing uh, again. So it's it's like a, an additional layer on top. So it's the idea that you need the these three sets of learnable weights. Um, so there's always some intuition behind why you uh, process the queries in one way and the keys in another way and the values in another way, uh, which is what the other paper says, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in the end, it's uh, it it's a bit abstract, right? Um, yeah, it, it seems that the, the the query key distinction is to some extent arbitrary. 
it's uh, it, it could might as well have been split out differently but um yeah, yeah. It, it's fine yeah um i mean the the way i think of it is the the query token is the one you want to find the representation of and the key token is the one that you attend to um that's yeah that's the that's the only distinction that i make um so yeah. i think so, yeah oh yeah i just wanted to say even if it's um a bit arbitrary it is useful so when when they are designing the the attention functions it is useful to think about them in this way sort of the the, the query matrix is going to uh, process the input such that it focuses on the the value that you are making a prediction on yeah the keys are going to be this the the, the key weights are going to be trained in a way that it'll focus on the on the surrounding values and and uh, and then the values are uh, a way to sort of transform this attention layer into uh, or reduce dimension of the of the attention layer into something uh, that's suitable for the output. It's just a useful way to think about it. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, guys. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny, all of this talk about um, query key uh, and value matrices, well, query and key matrices, and in the theorem and some of the experiments, they, you, they just get rid of these matrices anyway. So, but we'll, we'll see about that. Um, so okay that's the the positional encoding required for for images for for translational um invariants so let's move on to the the i guess the meat of the paper which is the theorem um so uh, the goal here is to um construct a, a self-attention layer that can express um any convolution layer of of kernel size um which has the same number of pixels as the number of heads in the self-attention layer. Um, there are some there are some details which um, I'd like to to go over hopefully on a second pass. Um, but uh, the the actual um, so I guess the formal statement of this is you if you have uh, so let's say you have a self-attention layer with K squared heads, so one head for every shift in the kernel. Um, and also suppose that for every um, shift, there is a unique head for which, um, for which the, the query token pays full attention to um, the, the query token at, at that shift. Um, so this is so I guess this is this is represented with the with the the bijective function um, uh, f between the the heads and the shifts, uh, yeah. And so if the, the the shift is is the one which is unique to the the head in question, then the attention probability is one. Otherwise, it's zero. So an an easy visualization of this is if I can get it out. Is just here. So if we can find a, a, a parameterization of um, the, the multi-head self-attention layer, so these are nine heads, um, where for each one the, the query um, pixel pays full attention to, to the, the respective shift, then we are able to express um, a, a convolution layer. Um, so that is the first lemma. Um, and so, yeah, so it means that if, suppose we have this kind of layer, then, then we can choose, um, then we can choose a weight matrix such that given any input tensor, the, the output of the, the multi-head self-attention and the convolution will be exactly the same. Um, okay, so I guess we can go through the proof of this one now um, because it's, um, I think it's kind of straightforward. So. What happens is um, a quick overview is uh, the 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 multi-head self-attention uh, expression is uh, split out um, as a sum across the the heads. So uh, instead of thinking of it as okay, you you concatenate these these value matrices and do do a big um, matrix multiplication with the projection matrix. Instead, you you matrix multiply in chunks so that the 
the the chunk of the the projection matrix which would see the value matrix for this head you you do the matrix multiplication and then just add it for each head um and so this matrix here is then just replaced with with um a learned uh, matrix and then uh and then we we so so you then rewrite the uh yeah so you, so you then rewrite this uh this matrix here as a sum across all of the keys in 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 a similar way as to uh, as to how we saw in in the blog and so then so then we say okay we assume that the layer um will will um attend with with probability one per head to each shift and so unless the um unless we have k equals um q minus um f of h here um so k minus q is the shift uh then um then this will be will be zero and yeah and otherwise it will be one and so we get an equation uh which looks very similar to the um to the original convolution equation which is here okay i guess i guess a better one would be would be the one in the block but um yeah so essentially we're manipulating the the multi-head self-attention uh, equation um under the the conditions for the layer to make it look exactly like a a convolution layer and uh, and we're summing, and, and it's equivalent to say, we're summing over um, the heads. That's equivalent to saying we're summing over the shifts as we saw before. So that's the, um, that's the first lemma. Um, and the, the second lemma is just um, essentially saying that we can find a um, relative encoding scheme and we can parameterize um, the the attention layer in a way that satisfies the condition of this condition of lemma one. Uh, so the actual parameterization or or encoding is given here. So as I said, the the query and key weight matrices are set to zero, and the the relative position key matrix is the identity, and then we have a, a three three dimensional um, relative uh, positional encoding uh, here, and and then the uh, v which is which is uh, this learn parameter here is then set to um, this value. So lemma two just goes through um, under this encoding. Uh, we we satisfy the the conditions for lemma one, and so um, the theorem is is proven. Um, so before I I move on, were there any questions at this point? No. Okay. Let's keep it going. So. Actually, come in. Um, yes. If you are going to uh, possibly come back to the quadratic uh, encoding, um, I don't think it's. A, I think it's probably a, a digression when you're in the middle of a proof here, but um, I, I've not quite got my head around um, the encoding uh, and also how it contrasts or compares with uh, the the sine or cosine encodings that um, uh, people are possibly using. Um, sorry, Adam. I'm, I struggled to to hear you there. Um, what 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 did you want to to find out about the the quadratic encoding? Uh, okay. So, um, I'm I'm not sure what else um, I can I can say about this. Uh, so. The um, okay, so it, it's it's just um, 
the the um, lemma two proves that under these parameters, these, this selection of parameters, we can construct a layer which for each head pays full attention to each shift um, in the kernel. And so, and so th this is how we're, we're able to express a, um, a convolution layer. Uh, okay, I think I will move on to the proof of lemma two. Okay, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's by construction, the, the, the dimension of the, the relative encoding a vector is, is fixed at three. And so, so substituting um, the, the key and query weight matrices, uh, we essentially end up with just uh, this term in, for, the, for the relative uh, attention score. With, with this matrix set to the identity, um, and so the so an, an an overview of the proof is if we assume that we can write the attention score in this way, then we would have that for whenever the um, the the coordinate difference between the the query and the key is equal to the the shift for for that particular head, um, we will be able to scale the the alpha coefficient um, uh, arbitrarily such that the the softmax um, output is equal to one, and uh, whenever the and 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 the the in in the opposite case. Um, doing the same thing with the the alpha coefficient, um, the the softmax. Um, so the the attention probability will be zero. So um, initially, I found this a bit confusing because, you know, alpha and uh, I think it's yeah, alpha and um, uh, the delta one and delta two here are the learned parameters in in this encoding. But of course, this is just a theoretical construction of of a of a self intention layer. Uh, so, so if yeah, so, so so the proof is if we can write it in this way, then we would have the the, the desired attention per head um, as we would have in 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 the kernel, uh, and 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 then um, the the proof is then just. So we can write it in this way, given our choice of uh, the vector v and the the positional encoding, as as given in the the um, the equation above. So yeah, you take the the dot product of these two, and um, split it out, and you can you can write it in this exact way with c equal to um, this here. So that's the that's the proof. Um, concluded. Um, okay, let's just see if there was anything else I wanted to say about the the proofs. Um, did did anyone want to add anything at this point? Maybe, maybe just for clarification. So so the proof essentially says that we can. Um, approximate any convolutional layer by a self attention layer mechanism provided we have enough heads right uh, yes or at, at least we, we can approximate it arbitrarily close if you wish to do so but that doesn't show that necessarily on the same problem trained the the attention layer would actually approximate such a convolutional layer layer yeah, so so that's that's actually the the, the second, um, well, I guess the last part of the paper in experiments where they show that uh, on on some heads, on some layers of the self attention, um, the 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 layer does act as um, as 
uh, as a convolution layer when, when left to its own devices. So outside the, the theoretical construction. Um, yeah. Is, so, is it actually surprising that it's possible because it seems you have more more parameters and given enough heads, it, it would be seem surprising if you couldn't approximate one by the other. Yeah, that's, I think that's a good point. And um, in, 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 in some sense, coming into this paper, you can think of, um, you know, if you think of self-attention as kind of a generalization of the, the, the convolution layer, um, because the receptive field is just bigger. And so, so then you're, so then the proof is basically saying if we restrict the, the, the parameters of the layer to only look at, um, you know, the receptive field of the kernel, then it, it will act exactly the same. So I guess, I guess it is um, uh, intuitive, but. It might be interesting actually to, to see where, if, if, you, if you take your, um, take your attention layer and decompose it in two parts, one that can actually be, uh, co uh, how to say, represented by a convolutional part, maybe one that can't, and see what is needed in order for this uh, non-convolutional part to be important in, in your predictions. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, um, that's interesting. Um, it might be mathematically yeah. difficult to go the other way around, right, so to show which part of the attention layer can be can be written as a as a sum of uh, compositions, uh, convolutions? Sorry. Okay, that's yeah, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, okay, I guess we can move on to the the experiments um, section. So, um, I think the the two goals of um, this this section is uh, so so they are to to show that that a, a fully attentional model so we have six multi-head um, self-attention layers um, produces a, a decent classifier and so this is compared with um, the the ResNet 18 model on Cypher 10 uh, and the the second goal is to show that um, sometimes or often um, in in some layers of of this 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 fully attentional multi-layer um, model, that yeah the, the the query pixel does pay attention to only um, some pixels um, inside the, the 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 receptive field of 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 what would be a kernel. Um, so yeah, so here. The, so the experiments are done, so in terms of um, self-attention, they're done with um, three arrangements. So using only the, the quadratic um, embedding, uh, using what are uh, learned um, embeddings. So uh, instead of having the, yeah, instead of having the, the, the relative position um, encoding as fixed as, as was defined um, earlier, uh, then they they are learned. Um, I think we can we can go through that when when it reaches the part of the paper, um, and then to to actually to actually combine them and include the context. So to bring back the the weight uh, the the key and query weight matrices that were that were um, removed before. Um, okay, Common, could yes. I switch microphones so maybe you can hear me better on this one? Um, yeah, could so could you? Great. Could you summarize the quadratic positional encoding? Um, yes. So let's go back. Uh, so for so there are, um, I guess three um, learnable parameters uh, for each head, and um, they are. Delta one, delta two, and alpha, uh, and uh, everything else is is fixed either by um, by actually, yeah. So so everything else is um, is is fixed. Uh, I'm not I'm I'm not sure how else to 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 summarize it. Does does anyone have um, any comments there? 
Yeah. So, so I think that the, the quadratic embedding is just, it's what you said before. It's like, okay, let's see if we can, let's see if we can prove that, uh, this, that a convolution can actually be, uh, let's say presented as a special case of self attention. So they take the self attention, which has, uh, billions of, uh, of learnable parameters and say, okay, let's restrict uh, the learnable queries and keys that say, we're gonna get rid of that. Uh, we're gonna just keep this uh, W key hat. And this is going to be our new uh, attention function, which is a, a specific case of the, of the, more, of the more general self attention. And these are the learnable parameters. And I guess the rest of the paper is just, okay, let's show that under these conditions. So they proved the theorem that under these conditions, uh, the self-attention actually becomes a convolution. And the rest of the paper is, well, if we do not, so if we don't put all these restrictions, would in some cases, the, the self-attention, which is that uh, self-attention learn embedding plus content, would it on its own learn that uh, learn this this convolution function. Yeah, thank you, uh, Carlos. So, yeah, so the, this this particular encoding is just um, made in a way to force uh, the 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 conditions of, um, of 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 the lemmas and and to to make to make the proof work. Um, there is a part here which says that. Um, you know the the encoding is it, so it isn't the only one that satisfies the conditions of 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 lemma one. Um, you know they they don't provide another example, but what they do say is that um, the the learned encoding um, later on um, it does uh, so with with that encoding the attention layer does learn to pay attention to um, pixels only in the kernel. Um, at some points, and so it, it suggests that you know this, as well as this being, um, as well as this having, um, so it, it has the capacity to be learned, but also that, that there may be some other fixed um, encodings that, that that do the exact same thing. Uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question, Adam. Uh, Thanks. It will, I think I'll it will take a little while for it to settle in my brain, but. Um, um, I think that that helped quite a bit. Thanks. No problem. Uh, okay, so back to the uh, experiments. So okay, so for the um, for the quadratic um, embedding uh, experiments, so the the so the the center of attention, so the 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 delta um, vector here is 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 randomly initialized. Um, multivariate normal, um, and you can see by the the, the figures that as the the model is uh, trained, focusing on one one um, query pixel, we have that uh, the <coughs> we have that the uh, the so if, so okay. I'm, I'm trying to remember what what these mean. Okay, so each color represents um, the attention um, scores, uh, uh, positions um, for each uh, head. And you can see that around you have a lot of uh, heads for which attention is paid just around the query pixel. And so um, they say that uh, you know uh, the the intuition that self attention um, learns convolution filters uh, is confirmed. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm not sure how convinced I am of this. Um, I'd like to hear what what every everybody else thinks. Um, in terms of the the other experiments, things things start to become a lot clearer. And also, there's there's a there's a website which which allows you to visualize this for different images. Um, yeah, because so if you go up to the to the image before, this is exactly what a convolution would do, right? So it would uh, it would pay it. So so the convolution is defined by 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 sliding your window uh, around the the pixel, right? 
So what you're getting is this sort of symmetric form, which, which is what the convolution would learn. So the okay. centers of attention are going to be symmetric. Uh, right, so it's more about, oh, I see. So it's more about uh, symmetry than it is about um, it being just around the query pixel. Okay, I think, I think that, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you, Carlos. Um, okay, so, so yeah, so this is the, the same, um, so yeah, this is in, in the same experiment, but they are, but it, th these are the, the attention uh, positions for each uh, layer of, of the, the, the six layer model. Um, okay, so in terms of uh, the, the learned uh, relative position encoding. Um, how they are learned is you have, um, instead of having your your predefined um, uh, relative um, position encoding, uh, as we saw earlier, um, you instead have two vectors, um, one for each, so one for um, vertical shifts, um, so, so vertical difference in coordinates and one for horizontal um, differences in coordinates. And these, these two vectors are then um, concatenated, but, but, but they, are, they are learned vectors. Um, and so you can see how even then, uh, so, so this, is, this is without um, content-based um, attention. Um, even then we have uh, we have similar behavior. So on on many of the at many of the heads on on many of the layers, we have that um, full attention is paid to um, to to pixels around the the, the query pixel, um, and yeah. So that's what it looks like. And in terms of including the in terms of including the, the, the content-based uh, attention, this is when we, we actually allow the, um, the, the key matrices to be, the key weight matrices to be um, learnable again. And so this is uh, applied and averaged over um, 100 test images. And so you see again, for a lot of heads and many layers, we, we see the behavior of of a, a convolution layer. Um, I think... Uh, um, uh, so, so you say we see the behavior of a convolution layer and, um, uh, and Carlos made a suggestion as to one way to interpret that, but I'm, I'm having a hard time mapping, you know, what the convolution layer does, you know, to what I'm seeing in that graph. Um, I can sort of get it at a kind of, you know, we'd sort of like it, it's not inconsistent with it, but to say it is it, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite feeling that. Uh, and maybe that's something that you could just, you know, uh, you may be able to help me get a, a clearer understanding of that. Um, did, you, did you want to add something, Carlos? Uh, yeah, sure. So if, if you go up, uh, yeah. uh, no, up to the, to the one that shows the quadratic. Yeah. So this is just one of the layers, right? So I guess what they call the, the center of attention is actually, uh, well, it, it, it's weird because I guess they, they did some dimensionality reduction, but what this graph is saying is that, I'm sorry, I can't really point. But if you look at Epoch 300, what, what it's saying is that each head is giving, in the end, it's giving a, it's giving some weights around a point, right? And then they, 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 they put that dotted line sort of to say, okay, this is, this is how it decreases. And it resembles a Gaussian, as they say. And this is exactly what a convolution will do is that you will have your central pixel and then you will have learnable weights around it, but it's a local, thing it's not attending over the whole over the whole space so what this plot is saying is that the attention layer what learned 
is to do a convolution around the pixel. Also, I think that the center of attentions, they uh, uh, avoid themselves, right? So they, they spread themselves out evenly. So that mm -hmm. if, if you sort of, it's, it's, it's a bit like, a, what, what do you call it? Like, like a um, kernel decomposition, right? So that you can take your, your, your whole thing and decompose it in orthogonal uh, yeah, representations that maybe each of them has like a different function. And together they, they would pretty much cover the whole picture again. Yeah. So, yeah, so in the end, you would have to go back to the, to the theorems and dilemmas to show why the fact that these centers of attention are there actually mean that it's a convolution. But I think, well, from, from, from the equations, it's not necessarily pretty clear, but if you go through it a bit, uh, you realize that when you do these sums of uh, like these uh, matrix operations, it, it's just exactly doing a convolution. So of course, it's not going to be a perfect convolution because you can see that they are not really aligned, the centers of attention, but it is learning to, to attend as if it was a convolution. Right, and so a, a perfect convolution would look like this for each head. Um, full attention to each shift in the kernel. Um, but instead, you see that this, this happens sometimes for, for some layers at some heads. Um, I think, I think that's, that's the point of, um, of, of the, the, the results in the experiments. Yeah. yeah, so actually, if you can go back, that would be, can you go back to the blog? Yep. Yeah, so, so this, is, this is a convolution, right? You have one weight on each pixel around, the, around the, your query, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, so if, if you have, uh, well, here you would need more heads than, than they put in the transformer, right? You would need uh, nine heads. Um, but since you only have six heads, and if you see on top, you, it learns sort of a, a four-dimensional convolution on the on the on the cross around the pixel uh but yeah i can't i can't really see many like convolutional so, behavior in this one <laughs> so, so here, here there are there are nine heads um as well this, yeah 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 i would call this one inconclusive <laughs> <laughs> right so, so this is i think this is what what i kind of meant about um not being um, very convinced. I mean, I guess for the for the quadratic encoding, it's a it seems to be a bit uh, clearer. But um, otherwise, um, you see you see you see the behavior sometimes. Um, yeah, and I think finally, um, well, first of all, in terms of um, learned uh, positional encoding, I think a paper uh, an, a good paper to read would be. Um, this one here, so the uh, the standalone self attention, and this is actually where um, the the kind of um, the the encoding for for row and so it says row and column offsets are concatenated and then and then learned. Um, yeah, and and finally, there's there's this great um, blog which allows you to kind of scan over uh, an an image. The, the attention weights are averaged over the batch um, uh, or attention and probabilities. And so you can see again, the, the desired behavior for, for, um, some, for, for some layers and some heads. Yeah. Were there any questions, comments, additions? Uh, could you please post in the chat the links for the for all these resources. Sure, uh, I'll do that. Otherwise we can put them up on the GitHub repo. Okay, um, I'll stop sharing now. Shouldn't they call it convolution is all you need? Or images at least. Because <laughs> that's kind of yeah. the point, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that there's an interesting discussion, maybe maybe for next time, around whether you actually need the transformers if all you care about is making a convolution, right? Because they show that you need 
many more parameters to basically learn to do a convolution. So just do the convolution, right? Yeah. Okay. So we've run out of time. Uh, so, well, thank you very much, Amin, for, for, for this interesting discussion. It certainly is a, is a fresh perspective on Transformers. Thank you. Uh, if we can do a show of hands to show appreciation to Amin. Can you see the hand? Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> People are raising hands. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, as usual, if you would like uh, to present a paper, or you would like, uh, um, sorry, if you would like to present a paper, or you would like uh, a topic to be discussed during Paper Club, please do get in touch with us. All our uh, contact information is in nplan.io. And uh, yeah, thank, thanks again, Amin. And uh, we'll see everyone next week. Thank you, Amin. Thank you.